For the first time, a new camera shows a high-definition view of how food travels through our bodies and into our stomachs. Food enters the stomach through a hole at the top. The stomach is a bag of muscle that churns, squashes, and squeezes food into liquid. At the same time, acids break the food down. The stomach walls protect themselves with a lining of mucus. Without it, the acids could digest parts of the stomach itself, causing stomach ulcers. About an hour later, the stomach squeezes the broken down food out through a tiny hole called the pyloric sphincter. The food enters the small intestine, an 11 foot coil of tube where we absorb most of the nutrients. The interior wall of the small intestine is lined with millions of microscopic projections called villi. These increase the surface area of the gut, making it easier to absorb nutrients. First, the pancreas pumps out a juice that neutralizes stomach acid. Then bile from the liver breaks down the fats into tiny droplets. Smaller droplets are easier for the intestine to absorb. After an hour and a half, the small intestine has absorbed most of the nutrients from the food. It's time for what remains to move on. It enters the large intestine through this, the ileocecal sphincter a valve that keeps our food from going back where it came from. What's left is a mix of waste food and dead cells from the walls of the gut. The large intestine's main job is to extract water from it. Lots of bacteria live here too, but it isn't because of an infection. We actually need them. They produce enzymes that break down complex carbohydrates in our food, carbohydrates we couldn't otherwise digest. Finally, after about 12 hours, we expel what's left of our first meal. One year old. We're mobile. We've perfected the art of crawling. Our bones are stronger. They need to be. We're getting pretty heavy. At birth, the skeleton is mostly cartilage, the same material as our ears. Cartilage is flexible. It's what allows us to squeeze through the birth canal. But after birth, our soft skeletons are a problem. They need to be rigid to support our growing bodies and protect our vital organs.
So right from birth, the cartilage starts to harden. Special cells called osteoblasts lay down minerals that turn soft cartilage into hard bone. Some bones even fuse together. At birth, we have gaps between the plates of the skull, which allow the skull to deform during birth. Through our first year, these gaps gradually close until the skull is finally complete. As our skeletons develop, so does our desire to get around. We're about to hit one of the major milestones in life, standing on two feet. The key isn't strength, it's balance. And the secret to standing is hidden deep in our ears. Beyond the ossicles, the bones we use for hearing, the inner ear is made up of three looping structures. Each loop is the size of a dime, and they're oriented to cover all three planes. These semicircular canals are part of our ears, but they have nothing to do with hearing. They're filled with liquid, and they tell us what's up, what's down, and what's on the level. The liquid inside sloshes against sensor hairs lining the tubes. The hairs send data to the brain about how we are oriented and our direction of movement. These are our organs of balance. Once we've mastered balance, we're one step closer to walking. Now there's no limit to where we can go and what we can learn. from a baby to a toddler. We're embarking on our most formative years, a time when we'll put our growing brains and developing immune systems to the test. Age two, we've survived infancy and can stand on our own two feet. Next up, is a uniquely human challenge, learning to talk. <laughs> Talking takes a lot of brain power. A two-year-old learns 10 new words a day. This is Broca's area the region at the side of the brain used for speech production and comprehension. <laughs> Language is what separates us from other animals. We exchange complex thoughts and ideas and teach our children not just by showing, but by telling. As our brains develop, we gain other uniquely human qualities. We're aware of our own identities and individuality we gain the ability to think for ourselves and we're forming memories 
that will last a lifetime. Like our first day at school.